In this video, I'll be going over the difference between the domain, the codomain, and the range of a function. So we're going to start off by defining all three terms, and then I'm going to go over uh, several examples to hopefully get, help you get a clear idea of what's going on when we talk about these things, because it can, it can be diffi difficult for students when they're first learning about it to differentiate or distinguish the difference between the codomain and the range. And you know, it becomes a question of why do we need the codomain, and what is the difference between the two? So hopefully uh, this video will start to clear that up a little bit. So the domain, which you're probably familiar with. So the domain is a set of all possible input values for the function, for a given function. So right here, set set of all input values. And this is just implied for, for a given function. So that would be just, you know, the kind of what, what the function can accept. So what is default what the function is defined on. So that will become clear, I think, when, when I start going through examples. Um, so the codomain So the codomain is a set into which all the output values are constrained to fall into. So um, we, we make the codomain large enough so that we know that all the potential output values of the function will fall into the codomain. So the codomain might be bigger than the actual range, the actual things that end up popping out of the function, but we need to make it big enough to know, to understand kind of what function, or what our target space is for our function. So we're, we're plugging things in and you know, what kind of things should we get out? So we're, we're plugging you know, a real number in, we shouldn't get some kind of imaginary number popping out, right? So that will be what the codomain will tell us about something. So I'll go ahead and write here um, the set into which um, output values are constrained to fall into. So I'll define the codomain. So the range, the range finally, the range is a set of all actual output values of the function. Okay. So it should be uh, to, help, to help make this a little bit clearer, I'll just kind of draw a little picture here so we can see what, what we're considering. So we start with something that we we'll call the, the domain, excuse me. So we have something, some domain over here. So some x values if we're taking f of x. So x, we're going to have some input values here in the domain. And then some codomain, some codomain, which is kind of our target set. So the set into which all of these uh, output values are going to be constrained. So we know that we're not going to get anything in here in this domain, kind of going outside of, these, of this codomain there. But uh, so the range, the range then, this is just for example, the range could be something like this within the codomain. So we know that the range is a subset of or completely contained inside of uh, the codomain here. So we can see that, for example, if we have x values here, we have x values here inside of the domain. These are uh, getting mapped into the range here. So uh, this would be f of x. Uh, so same for other values of x here in the domain. It's just important to note that the codomain, it might be equal to or might be you know, equal to the range, but it might also be larger than the range if the codomain will never be smaller. The, the purpose of having the codomain is to just give us a sense of what kind of output values we're looking for and Oftentimes, when we're dealing with a very uh, more complicated function, which might have a difficult to describe range or composition of functions for which the range might be, again, difficult or um, kind of a lot of legwork to define, ha having a codomain will help us understand just the basic premise of what kind of output values we'll have for our functions so that we don't need to go into the specifics of defining exact, uh, exact range values or exact output values. So we can kind of get the idea uh, of we know what to expect. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and go through a couple of examples here, a couple of simple um, examples of functions. OK. So our first example here is going to be, OK, so let f of x equal, equal 2x. So if we let f of x equal 2x, so we'll go one at a time and identify first the domain, then the codomain, and then the range. So the domain 
So the domain of f of x is equal to 2x because we haven't already set, because we haven't already established a domain, which we will in a later example. You know, the domain here is just going to be the real numbers because you can plug anything in here that you want for x. Or in other words, uh, negative infinity to infinity is equal here. So that's going to be the domain. So the codomain, the codomain is a set of uh, all possible output values. So the, what our function the output values are going to be constrained to. And it's also going to be uh, the real numbers. Uh, just again here, negative infinity to infinity. So that's going to be the codomain. And so we know the, the range is a subset of the codomain. But in this case, we know the range. So if we plug in for the domain, we can plug in any real number. That means integers. That means you know we have all decimal points. We have pretty much we have everything. We have all the real numbers. So if this were just the integers, for example, we would just have or positive integers. We would just have okay. So we just get positive. Uh, we just get positive even numbers back for our range. But it, because in this case, the domain is defined as the real numbers, we know that the range is also all the real numbers because you can plug in. Um, any real number, and you can get any real number back out. Okay, so in this case, the codomain and the range are equal. So we have this, the codomain and the range are both going to be just all the real numbers. So let's consider a different example. Okay, so let's consider the function now f of x is equal to x squared. So following the same procedure as we did before. So for f of x is equal to x squared, so what is our domain? So what can we plug into this function? Well, it's defined everywhere, so we can plug in anything we want, any real number we want for x. So it's going to be all the real numbers for our domain here. Or again, negative infinity to infinity. So what is the codomain? The codomain of this function f of x is equal to x squared. The codomain of, of this function is also going to be the real numbers. Once again, negative infinity to infinity because we know that anything we plug in here, anything that we plug in would, all, would always give us back a real number. So, but what is going to be our actual range? So what is going to be our actual set of output values? So the range, so no matter what you plug in, no matter what real number it is, when you square it, we're going to get a positive real number back. So we know that in fact our range is going to be a smaller subset. So it's going to be a subset of the codomain in this case. The range here is just going to be uh, positive real numbers. So in other words, uh, positive real numbers. So as you can see here, the codomain gave us an idea of what kind of thing we need to be looking for for the range, or what kind of output values we're going to be having uh, for this function. And the range is, in fact, going to be a subset of the codomain, so just positive real numbers in this case, because no matter what we plug in, even if it's negative, we square it, so we're going to get a positive real number back. OK. So let's consider one final example in which we define the domain to be not the natural domain of the function. OK, so finally. Let's consider a function f of x. f of x is equal to, let's just say, x squared plus x squared plus 3. OK, so we can go ahead and define the domain in this case. So I'm just going to say, OK, I'm going to define the domain as just uh, the natural numbers or just the uh, positive integers here, starting with 0. So the domain I'm defining to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So we have the positive whole numbers there. So the codomain, the codomain is also going to be uh, the set of positive whole numbers there. Um, so we're never going to be able to plug in anything, no matter what, to get a negative number in here, into, because our function is f of f of x is equal to x squared plus three. So our codomain is going to be just the same thing as our domain, which is just positive numbers here starting with zero. And finally, our range in this case, well, 
let's kind of look at this. So it might help us to make a table of values. So we have our function, we have our uh, x values here, and then we have our output values f of x there. So for example, when you plug into this function, so our domain starts at zero, I've defined it to start at zero, so we plug in f of zero, so we have zero, so zero squared. So I'm going to go ahead and write the zero down here. So we know f of zero is equal to zero squared plus three, and zero squared is just zero, plus three is going to be three. So our first value here is going to be three. So next in our domain, we see that we have zero, one. So why don't we plug in one? So we plug in one here. So f of one. It's going to be equal to 1 squared plus 3. So 1 squared is going to be 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. So f of 1 is going to be equal to 4. So let's just keep going here, just one more. So say we have f of 2, because we can see we have positive whole numbers again, once again, in our domain here. We have 0, 1, and 2, so I'm just going down the domain. I'm not plugging in any you know, decimal points or any negative numbers or anything, because the domain is defined on the positive whole numbers starting at 0. So f of 2 here, 2 squared plus 3. So 2 squared is going to be 4, plus 3 is 7. So we can, we can kind of get, a, get an idea of what our, our range is going to look like here. So our range is, in fact, in this case, not going to be all the positive whole numbers because, as you can see, it's going to be a subset of the codomain because the codomain is all the positive whole numbers. Yet the range, in the range, we can see that we have a, a strictly increasing function here which means that the, the function values are always just getting larger um, as our input values are getting larger here. So we know that we have 3, 4, 7, so we're skipping some, so we're selecting some from here, so we, have, we would have 3, and then there'd be 4 here, we have 7 down there, so we're just kind of cherry-picking some out of the codomain. But the codomain gives us an idea of what our output values are going to look like. So now we can say the range is, the range is going to be the set so just taking these function output values here, 3, 4, 7, and so on and so forth. Um, just continue the way that you obtain these range values is just by plugging in numbers for uh, in numbers from the domain, uh, so domain quant uh, quantities into the function there and seeing what kind of values you get out. In this case, it's going to be more specific than just, for example, all the real numbers. But as you notice, once again, the range here is a subset of the codomain, and if you're still unclear on what that, it means for something to be a subset, well, if we look at the codomain values here, so we have the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth, and we have the range values, so just going to write down 3, 4, 7, and so on. Well, we can see that all of these values in here, inside of the range, are also members of this setup here, the codomain. So all of the, every member of the range set, because it is a subset of the codomain, is also included, is also a member of the, uh, the set, the codomain set. So as you can see here, we have no number. There is no value or there is no uh, quantity inside of the, se the set of range values that is not in the set of codomain values. So that's just hopefully to get, give you a better idea of kind of the difference between um, domain, codomain, and range, which will come, on, which will come in handy uh, later on in college algebra. And if you ever get to calculus, when you get into those calculus courses, it will also help you get a better understanding of what's going on there. So that's going to be it for this video.